Good morning. It's uh, Tuesday, July 6th, 9.30, uh, time for the Madonna County Commissioner's meeting. If you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I'd like to start with a prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we beseech your divine guidance in this meeting. Keep us ever mindful of our obligation. Grant us, dear Lord, wisdom, tolerance, and courage that we may well serve our county and fulfill our trust. Amen. Amen. Uh, Bill Hudson, the president, is not going to be able to uh, join us today. Um, and if you don't mind me editorializing a little bit, uh, that uh, actually pr prior to July 1st, he would have normally been able to join us had he had internet access. Um, unfortunately, the uh, in House Bill 110, which was the uh, budget bill, there was a provision to allow uh, uh, for uh, boards such as ours to have teleconferencing and video conferencing and having uh, members uh, present. Uh, it was removed by the Senate, uh, but uh, there is a pending bill, House Bill 43, by Representative Hoops and Sebecki and General Accounting and uh, Oversight Committee in the House um, that uh, um, uh, hopefully would could bring back the ability to do these uh, video conferencing and these uh, telecommunications. Uh, it's the wave of the future. I, I really believe that uh, it, it undermines the ability for people uh, to participate and certainly when you have a three-person board uh, to be able to have uh, people present uh, at, and uh, for that is all, all the more important uh, as, as well as larger councils as well. Uh, I will point out in House Bill 110 there is one entity that reserved the right to be able to do teleconferencing it's the Ohio Developmental Disabilities Council uh, be able with all the provisions in there to be able to do the, the video conferencing and so forth and our hope is that they would uh, eventually be able to extend the General Assembly uh, extend it further to other other uh, public bodies and uh, with that that's I'm done editorializing and hopefully uh, we be no, able I to hope have, it passes have the it just makes sense it's the wave of the future agreed thank you all right, so our first order of business, approval of minutes, June 29th. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of June 29th. And I will second. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Swag? Yes. Hamblin. Yes. All right. And with us today, uh, Andy Conrad, uh, County Engineer's Office, and for him is uh, Dan Becker. Morning. Good Forgot morning. my glasses, so if I'm squinting, that's why. Okay. Right. I have uh, three resolutions for your consideration today. The first one is the necessity to close Chippewa Road between Lake and Ballish Road. The second is for the necessity to close Chippewa Road between Lafayette and Vandermark Road. And the third resolution is the resurfacing of River Sticks Road between, in Montville Township between Smith and Fenn Road. I will make a motion to approve all three resolutions. I will second the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Sample? Yes. Thank you. Very nice good. tie. Thank you, Dan. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, part of the 4th of July celebration. Uh, we have Amy Lyon Gavin, our Assistant County Administrator. Good morning. Good morning. I have 11 finance uh, resolutions for your consideration. Then, if I may, I'll present transits. Uh, Shannon wasn't able to make it to, to the sure. meeting this morning. So, for finance, the first resolution is amending the appropriation measure resolution. The second resolution is amending the 2021 appropriations resolution by transferring appropriations. The third resolution is a revenue adjustment uh, for various funds. The fourth is cash transfer for various funds. Fifth resolution is declaring Medina County property as excess property. Sixth resolution is approving the transfer of Medina County inventory between various Medina County offices. Seventh resolution is sales tax distribution to the various school districts located in Medina County. The eighth resolution is declaring it a necessity or necessary, pardon me, to proceed with the submission of a renewal of the county home levy and an additional county home levy. Ninth resolution is authorizing a contract with Liturgical Publications Incorpor Incorporated. This is for publishing services on behalf of the Office for Older Adults. The tenth resolution is allowing expenses of county officials. Uh, this includes requests from common pleas, 
the juvenile court, the sheriff's office, and the prosecutor's office, all for various meetings and trainings within Ohio. And the 11th resolution, which ends the finance resolutions this morning, is approving claims for the week in the amount of $558,282.05. Um, I will make a motion to approve the uh, 11 resolutions. I will second the motion. Discussion? Yes, I just wanted to state that that uh, county home levy was to get the process started and to get the information from the auditor's office. Thank you. I think it, it needs to be clear this is a procedural uh, requirement right. Correct. Uh, in order to uh, have the further furtherance of this issue, uh, have public hearing as well as put an additional measure, uh, a resolution that would put it on the ballot. Uh, it must go to the county auditor for certification. So as, well, obviously when we present this before the public, we want to know exactly how much this is supposed to produce. And so it is a, a purely a procedural uh, matter and that uh, any changes uh, subsequent to further discussions by the commissioners, uh, as well as due to input of the public during our public hearing, likewise it can be modified. But at this point, like I said, it is a procedural, just to make it clear that mm -hmm. this does not put it on the ballot quite yet. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Handling. Yes. And then if, if I may, just sure. for uh, Transit Director Shannon Ryan, the resolution uh, he had prepared today for your consideration is authorizing Medina County Public Transit to request proposals for strategic plan development services. I will make a motion to approve. Uh, second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Handling. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, next, Holly Murin, our Human Resources Director. Good morning. Good morning. On our personal changes resolution today, we have two new hires, one in sanitary and one in maintenance, one promotion at Job and Family Services, two transfers between agencies from Job and Family Services to Office for Older Adults, three appointment changes in transit, two rate increases in sanitary, one fund change in finance, and one resignation in finance. Second resolution is amending the table of organization for the Medina County Commissioner's Department. I will make a motion to approve the resolutions. Uh, second the motion. Any discussion? I'd like to wish Erin well. It was a delight Indeed. to have her in our, our department. I'll second that. <laughs> uh, roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Hambly. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, Scott Miller, our county administrator. Good morning, Scott. Good morning. I just have one resolution for you today. Uh, this resolution is authorizing the transfer of 0.46 acres located at 881 Lafayette Road uh, to the Metropolitan Housing Authority. This will be used for permanent supportive housing. Uh, this with the adjacent, um, adjacent uh, parcel will be used to build a 10-unit uh, facility. I will make a motion to approve. I will second the motion. Any discussion? I think it's a wonderful use for the property. At, uh, I, I would absolutely agree. I think it's important to know, too, because Bill can't be here present, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse, he would certainly be willing to also publicly support this mm -hmm. as a good use. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, instead of uh, uh, being able to move with all three commissioners indicating this is a good use of, for public land, uh, it's only two commissioners are going to have their signature on this. And uh, unfortunately, that is just, like I said, hopefully the law can change in the future, in which uh, in, the, in the future in, people would understand that all three commissioners are solidly behind this project mm -hmm. and believe it is very important uh, and it has a public benefit. So with that, roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Assembly? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Jeremy Sinko, our county uh, sanitary engineer. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, three resolutions for you today. Uh, one is uh, awarding contract A, rejecting bids for contracts B and C, and authorizing the sanitary engineer to rebid the 2020 home sewage treatment system replacement project. Uh, the second is the final resolution to proceed with the proposed road improvement project along State Route 57 in Medina County. And the third is authorizing the sanitary engineer to enter an agreement with Jones and Henry Engineers for professional design services to replace an existing generator at the North Pump Station located in Sharon Township. Right. I'll make a motion to approve the three resolutions. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? No. Seeing none, roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Jeremy. Jeremy. Uh, Debbie Kiley, our Job and Family Services Director. 
Good morning. Good morning. Just five resolutions for your consideration this morning. The first is author authorizing the county auditor to transfer funds from the county general assistance to the public assistance fund. The next one is authorizing a contract with Hope Recovery Community. The next is authorizing an agreement for foster and adoption recruitment services. The next one is authorizing an agreement for our CCMEP services with Tri-County Jobs for Ohio graduates. And then the final one is an advertisement for proposals for our job development services. And that contract doesn't expire until September, but we're starting sooner than later. I will make a motion to approve the five resolutions. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, uh, we have our uh, department updates. Uh, Greg Brown, County Home Superintendent. Good morning. Good morning. So starting out with census today, we're at 42 residents. Um, we do have one that's due in this month to make us at 43. Presently, we're at three um, participants for the adult daycare. Some of our collaborations that <clears throat> for this week, uh, the Medina Farmers Market, uh, after uh, Saturday, they meet. Any donations that they have from any of the vendors, we pick them up and bring them to the home. We just picked up the Holy Martyrs Church Food Pantry just made contact with us, and they started just last week uh, Panera Bakery items, dropping them off for us. Uh, July 3rd, one of our events, we had the clutters through Medina Kids Care uh, come on Saturday. A uh, great time. Uh, they even celebrated Memorial Day since they missed that celebration with us. Uh, they had two VFW um, uh, veterans come and do uh, taps and, and play for us. Sandy even showed up, of course. I know him. So that was uh, an exciting time for the residents. And then yesterday, we made sure they had a really good uh, picnic. They had uh, ribs and corn on the cob and watermelon. They had that for lunch. Uh, some of the events that have that have happened at our place, um, Life Care has uh, been back, and they've been providing mon monthly celebrations for the residents. I think this month it's uh, strawberry shortcake. They just come, kind of do something small for them. Uh, we've started back up the the monthly baking groups, um, and then access the arts. I don't know if you saw in the. Uh, Juvenile Detention Center, Ron's newsletter about uh, Rolando doing the ukulele lessons will access the arts, has that same grant with us. And so this month they'll also be starting up lessons uh, with the residents. So that was a really good, really good piece in there. Um, they're also, they're hosting a concert series, series called Music uh, on the Circle and it's at Sharon Center City Hall. And just uh, last month they went and saw uh, a concert there, so it's nice to get out and they see, see something. Uh, just a plug there again, men's barbecue, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then something coming up uh, in July, the July 27th, the Litchfield Band is coming, and I was talking with Becky, the activity director. They've been coming for over 40 years, and I guess even all the way back to the Barths, the previous superintendents, three superintendents ago, were actually members of it. And 40 years now, they've been coming to the home. And that's all I have. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Music with the Arts, uh, you said they give lessons on? Access the Arts, yes. Access then they, they start with the ukulele because four versus six strings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other instruments that they have? Well, from there, they'll go to the guitar, but they'll start out. And they've got the, that grant gave them the money to buy both. Nobody with the drums. Yeah. You know, uh -uh, but okay. yeah. <laughs> they're making percussion instruments later on, just yeah, just to right. go along with it. And cool. Yeah, we'll see if this turns into a whole concert at the at the home or not. Oh, we'll that's see. Nice. That's nice. That's a great program. Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank, Thank you. you very great. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Denise Testa, Planning Services Director. Good morning. Um, before I get started on my uh, my report, I do have one resolution for your consideration. Um, it's uh, authorizing the advertisement for bids for our CDBG funded City of Brunswick Jefferson Lincoln resurfacing project. I will make a motion to approve. I will second the motion. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Sweaty? Yes. Hambly? Yes. 
Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, to get started uh, from January through June, so um, we've uh, received 19 major subdivisions with 634 sublots. Uh, we've also received 26 minor subdivisions with 55 sublots. So things are uh, moving very well. Uh, we are continuing to meet with our townships regarding the uh, CDBG projects, um, so as well as the <coughs> excuse me Lafayette Critical Infrastructure grant as well. Um, for our July uh, Planning Commission meeting, uh, which is tomorrow, we are um, reviewing five projects represented by five townships, so two text amendments and three subdivisions. Um, our CHIP grant application has been submitted successfully. We've met the June 23rd deadline. Fair housing presentations, those will be highlighted in the, uh, the newsletter um, I'm presenting at Second Baptist Church, which I'm very excited about as well as the Office of Older Adults. <clears throat> Finally, regarding the Emerging Leaders and uh, Rural Advisory Committee for NOACA, those meetings occurred last week. Um, the primary uh, uh, topics were the long-range plan, uh, as that was just approved on June 11th. During the legislative and funding update, um, one of the uh, uh, points of interest, particularly to Medina County, regarding the surface transportation reauthorization bill, um, they've received $48 million, and uh, one of the projects includes a $3.2 million uh, project in Montville Township for a roundabout at River Sticks and State Route 160. <laughs> There's also, um, we've been uh, in cooperation with uh, economic development meeting about the comprehensive economic development strategy with NOACA and providing some feedback regarding that. And then um, the other updates were pretty much um, related to Cuyahoga County as part of those two projects. So it's getting a lot busier at River Sticks and 162. Oh, yeah. I, I drive that on a regular basis. I've noticed that as well. So, so I, I think a roundabout is a positive initiative. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? No. No. OK. Thank, thank you very much. Very busy, I know. All right. Um, I don't see. I Forrest, see okay. Forrest, but he's not here. All right. Yeah, Forrest Thompson was on the agenda, but if he comes in, we'll let him talk. So, with that, next, uh, we don't have any commissioner's resolutions, so we'll move next to public comment. Um, just a reminder for five minutes. Um, anybody would like to, to speak? Yeah, please, please come forward. And just for the record, please state your name and address. Kathy Jones, Sharon Township. And I just, I just have a question. Have have you been able to talk to Forrest Thompson, Thompson or you, Mr. Hampley, regarding the uh, radioactive brine spreading, the criminal uh, investigation of that? I did see Forrest at a meeting, and he did say he was reviewing the information. So you provided. did mention to him to? Oh, no, he mentioned to me that he was he got the okay. same packet we did, and he was reviewing the information. Okay. Actually, yeah, was it a part of the Farm Bureau? Yes. Has what's called yes. the Legislative Breakfast uh, about okay. two Fridays ago. Mm -hmm. so and he brought that up as, as an update for a number of the people, the President uh, Colleen and I were, as well as other elected officials, mm -hmm. talking about how he's reviewing. Okay, great. If you could uh, pressure him to maybe have the Attorney General investigate. I know the Attorney General's been getting a lot of calls on it, and he'd like to know that the prosecutors are want investigation too. It's important. Okay, okay that's. Well, I, I would suggest you contact his office. I am going okay. to do that Good. because we have an attorney t uh, contacting sure. his office too, but right. since I gave it to you and okay. we were asking the he electeds. Did, he did bring it up to okay, us. great. Oh, Thank did. you. Right. Thank you very much. Thank that's all. Thank you. Right. Yeah, please come forward. And if you wouldn't mind, for the record, your, your name and address. Thank yes. You. <clears throat> Sandra Billick, 3414 Hamlin Road, Medina, Ohio. Um, good morning, Commissioners. I'd like to talk a little bit about our June 21st Medina Township zoning public hearing. It was a really good turnout by the Medina Township citizens. Um, during the public comments, some mention was made by a couple people. Um, they're theorizing that there might be some kind of an agenda to get a truck stop there at that intersection. I thought that was interesting. Um, board member Traves got a little upset at the chair, thought she was misinterpreting the minutes from the MCPC meeting. 
I guess it depends on who is reading those minutes and how they are interpreting them. Everyone I've talked to seems to get the gist of what happened at that meeting. Now it seems that two of our county commissioners want to talk about lawsuits from Medina Township regarding our comprehensive plan and our zoning. I think there would be more lawsuits if you spot zone that area to general business. More parcels would want it, and then they'd probably sue if they didn't get it. Precedents. I believe that term also came up at the MCPC meeting by one of the board members. I think some of our county commissioners want to tell Medina Township to not limit progress. Again, that term progress is up for interpretation, too, I think. Yet the county does it all the time by intentionally not extending sewer. That's a very good way to intentionally limit growth and progress. Is that a good thing? I think it is. There's lots of reasons for that. So it's okay for the county to do it, but not Medina Township. Maybe Commissioner Hambly can come to the trustees' public hearing. I'd like to extend to you a personal invitation. I would think you would want to see in person how your constituents think and feel about the drastic requested zoning change to general business at Route 3 and 71, where there is this huge swath of land surrounding there that's zoned rural residential. Commissioner Hambly, you also like to expound on the legalities of our comprehensive plan and our zoning. I was just wondering if you had a chance to read the eight-page letter that was submitted by the attorney for Holy Martyrs. If not, I have a copy of it here for you if you want it. Would you like that? I'll give it to you now. Otherwise, you can probably request it from the Medina Township. If you have a copy, I'll be glad to. I, I do. It's that. actually it's actually quite uh, good. Do I have, I have this do you have more than one? So go ahead. I'd have one, one and you can give one to the other commissioner. Um, it's very good. I also took the time to do some minutes of the public comments from the Medina Township Zoning Commission public hearing. And what the over 300 people who attended, your constituents, feel about this. Um, I also have that if you would like that as well. I, would you like I'll, that? I'll be able to access it once they uh, get approved. As, the, you, as you know, there's a difference between uh, a formal there is. Minute, uh, minutes and, and those that are by the and, parties. So. And uh, the audio is available now on the Medina Township website. The Medina Post did a poll on sheets and the question was, should Medina Township grant a zoning variance at the Route 371 intersection for sheets? 34% said yes. It would be a convenient location for many. 46.4 said no, that that should remain predominantly a rural location. And 19.6 said that they didn't give a sheets. <laughs> now, that was a countywide vote, not specific to Medina Township. And if you take the time to read the comments, it was interesting. It kind of mirrored what the people at the, um, you know, at our public hearing said. And then finally, maybe you're aware or maybe not, but Mr. Gerspatcher has on his Facebook page that all three county commissioners voted at the MCPC and were among the seven to two vote, but he actually has it eight to two. I just find that interesting. Um, just some overall stats from the public hearing, over 300 people attended, 250 signed in to the township sign-in sheet, 211 signed our declaration of citizens opposed to the rezoning of Route 3 and 71. There were over 300 letters sent to the township against the rezoning, 11 letters were four, and 36 residents spoke at the public hearing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Billick, want to come forward? And just your name and address for the record. Good morning. Good morning. Jim Billick, 3414 Hamlin Road in beautiful Medina Township. Thank you for your time. I'm here to discuss the Sheets attempt for zoning change and um, all its impacts and apparently your support of this zoning change. I'd like to encourage the commissioners to self-investigate this matter. Not just listen blindly to Commissioner Hambly's agenda and perspective. 
like, like everything will work out just fine with traffic and sewer and lighting per the realtor, per the property owner, per sheets and the commissioner. No need to worry about any of this. I'd urge you to listen to the audio of the Zoning Commission meeting, to read the words of not just one constituent, but all the public comment form that took place. Your constituents of Medina Township, citizens, unanimously oppose this change. Finally, one impact I have not heard Commissioner Hamley comment on, unless I missed it, is crime. I'll go out on a limb here and assume you're all opposed to crime and the criminal elements. I implore you all to read the police reports for sheets at the non-interstate uh, site at 94 and 18. I've looked at nearly 20 years of data. You should as well. I've looked at the last year of the pilot travel uh, location along the interstate in Richfield. You should as well. I've also looked at the FBI data for crime in Medina Township for 2016. It's the last full year I could find. Here's some stats for you. In Medina Township that year, five violent crimes, two of rape, three aggravated assault, 141 property crimes, 13 burglaries, two car thefts, 126 larcenies, a total of 292. Would you care to guess how many incidents and reports were at that pilot travel center in one year? 198. 41 collisions. Hmm. Traffic will not be impacted at 3 and 71 based on that, I guess. 52 traffic violations. Again, no traffic impacts apparently. 22 suspicious persons. 10 thefts, 9 fights, 4 mental issues, 1 suicide, 4 domestic disputes, 6 drugs DUI, uh, arrest, 13 EMS requirements, and two hazmat visits for leaks or spills. And finally, how about the sheets at 94 and 18? Again, this is a non-interstate site, unlike what 3 and 71 would be. I have that data too. 40 per year on average, it would be a lot more, but it appears that they have reclassified their theft criteria in recent years. This does not include the additional patrol stops that take place. It does include five suicide attempts, a kidnapping, prisoner relays, suspicious persons, thefts, trespassing, consensual encounters, and numerous collisions and traffic violations. I would expect, being on the interstate, a station, mart, drive through at 71 and 3 would yield closer to the 200 per year at pilot. And again, this would be just the first domino. If you support the zoning change, Who's going to pay for all this? Medina Township will. Let alone we'll be paying for all the safety risks in the township. If you indeed support this, thanks sarcastically for supporting all this significant increase in crime and criminal element in Medina Township. It would be a sad commentary on your judgment if you continue down that road. And I urge you to reconsider your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Very good. Okay. Um, done with public comment. Uh, discussion session. Uh, go ahead. And um, Scott, do you have anything for discussion? <coughs> Amy? Holly? Yes. Jeremy? <coughs> Just real quick. Um, in years past, we've always done a um, veterans breakfast right. for uh, county employees, and you know, with COVID last year, we were unable to do so. So I was just uh, would like to request permission uh, to do a breakfast this year for uh, county employee veterans uh, and give them permission to attend during uh, oh, sure. hours. Absolutely. So okay, great. Well, then we'll get working on that. All right. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Discussion? John. Anything? Colleen? No, but. I know we need, okay. Well, I've got nothing, so. I will make uh, a motion to go into executive session to consider the compensation of a, of a public employee. And I will second the motion. Uh, roll call, please. Swedek? Yes. Sambly? Yes. And with that, that'll conclude today's uh, public session. Uh, we will.
reconvene and adjourn afterwards. I expect no, uh, no action following that uh, executive session. Thank you.
The signal? Okay. It is uh, 10 07. We have returned from executive session. Uh, Colleen, do you have a motion? I will make a motion to adjourn. I will second the motion. Roll call. Swedek? Yes. Hambly? Yes. Everybody have a good day. Thank you.